Mark, thank you for joining me today. Now, it's a really exciting time to be in the digital space. There's lots of stuff going on. So what do you see as the most significant changes that have happened in the last five to ten years or so? I can't, if you look back, ten years ago it was completely different. I think ten years we were sort of the height or maybe the, the peak of the, the first dot-com bubble and I was running a, a start-up in London. We we're just in the process of sort of figuring out what to do. Um, and I guess the next five years, it's sort of the problem went away, if you like. You know, I remember coming, I came back to WPP in 2002 and, um, you know, no one wanted anything to do with the web. And that all changed, I guess, about five years ago with, as, Google, um, as Google exploded. Today, I'd say what excites us, um, mobile, social, e-commerce, perhaps, you know, the three things that would be on, the, you know, the top of top of our client's agenda, top of our agenda for, for what we're looking at. Where do you see this space as being the most powerful from a corporate perspective? I think, you know, historically, um, digital has been very good at driving sales. So look at the people that have embraced it more and it's no surprise, it's the, you know, the, the big e-commerce companies, the Ebays, the Amazons of this world. And they, you know, quickly figured out that Spending money on search led to sales, ad did, airlines, uh, other travel companies, uh, financial services. So that kind of strong, you know, performance link between spending money on marketing and, you know, bottom line results has really been, I guess, what digital has been best at. Um, for packaged goods companies and other companies, you know, in so-called low interest sectors, it's been a little bit more difficult, if you like. There aren't there aren't as many good case studies of companies that have really transformed their brands. I think if you have a strong creative idea, you know, look at the work that P&G um, did on Old Spice, you know, a strong creative idea, it can also capture people's um, imagination digitally. And I think, you know, one of the things that we're seeing are clients that start with digital and start with ideas that work digitally and then think about um, exploring them in other media rather than the kind of traditional way of starting with a TV execution and then figuring out what the, what the banner ad was. So I think, you know, it's sales, it's thinking about new um, creative processes. Um, I think the companies that do well focus and spend, you know, time. You know, digital is a, an environment where there's a tremendous amount of data and sort of continuous uh, improvement, continuous watching of the, of the metrics really helps get campaigns, campaigns right. So, you know, the data and analytics side is another part of what successful companies do, do properly. Now, you mentioned P&G and the Old Spice campaign there, but looking more broadly, what other companies do you think are heralded as the kind of beacons of getting it right when it comes to digital? I mean, I think, you know, Google is a great example of a company. You know, it's the world's it's the world's actually now the world's second most valuable brand in the in the brands he study in the last year apple has overtaken google in our in our rankings but you know they built what was then the mo world's largest brand substantially using digital media now you may have noticed they're starting to do you know traditional tv they're starting to do outdoor so even they don't see it just as being digital but they do a broad range of activity in the work they do you know, looks great, builds on their brand values. We know that within pharma, often the pushback is that we're a regulated industry, we can't do some of these things. But from your perspective, what do you think pharma companies could be taking from what other industries are doing digitally? But every time I meet someone from the pharmaceutical industry in, in marketing, they always tell me it's different. Uh, sometimes I think there's a little bit of a closed shop, you know, going on with people sort of saying, oh no, we're different, so sort of stay out of it. And you know, if you look back historically, that's what they said about, you know, TV advertising for OTC brands and, and actually in time the big consumer agencies got into doing that as well. So I think we'll see something similar take place in, in, in digital. Look, I think the reality is the first place people look when they get sick is the internet. And pharmaceutical companies have to be there. You know, how can how can they not be there, even though I you know understand that it's difficult perhaps from a regulatory perspective for them to be there. So if you start on the basis they have to be there, then you go from there. Um, you know, people go to 
Dr. Google is the first thing people do, right? And I think I've read statistics that even sort of 40 or 50% of physicians use Google during a, a consultation to look up information. So people are using the web. Um, so the question is not whether they should be there, or, but how they should be there. I mean, it's the first medium where you can have a direct one-to-one -one conversation with people so you know who the person is that, you know, that you're talking to. You can verify that you're able to talk to them. And you, know, you, you can manage that conversation. Now, it may be difficult to do, and I hear lots of reasons like, oh, there's a problem, we have to report it to people, so you have to put procedures in place. So, fine, you have to put procedures in place, you know, things that need to be done. But I think, um, you yeah, know, pharma companies need to um, start to embrace the medium and, and learn, and, you know. I don't want to say they'll get it wrong because it's not the sort of thing you want to get wrong, but they need to get it right, I guess, is what I'd say. The other key pushback, of course, that I hear within pharma is that it's very difficult to measure the return on investment for these initiatives, and indeed some companies say it's impossible. What's your perspective on that? Well, I think pharma companies used to produce a whole lot of printed materials, and I don't think they ever really said, well, how do we measure the ROI on our printed materials? If they, if they tried to measure it, I don't think they'd have any more success doing that than they would measuring the internet. So I think, look, it's difficult. Um, it's hard to measure the ROI on TV as well. Um, so I think, you know, whilst, whilst the, social, the digital or social initiatives are a tiny percentage of the budget, clearly it's difficult to measure. But if they get bigger, they'll get, you know, they'll become easier to measure. And if you lead with them as ideas or as ways of communication, I think people will start to see um, the results. You know, we're doing some work now on um, digital share of voice inside Kantar, looking at you know the share of voice of a brand in social media, paid search, display, and that will start to give brands an indication of sort of how you know how much they're reaching consumers compared to the competition. And if you look at that over time, I think people will start to um, to see the impact. It's harder to link to sales, obviously. But then, you know, adherence policies, you know, I've seen a lot of people talk about that. You know, that you can link quite directly to sales. You know, people, you know, take the prescription, you know, for the correct amount of time, then one can measure the, the sales improvement, you know, pretty directly. So I'd say there are elements that, that are easier to do than others. So given your perspective looking across other industries, when you look into the pharma space, where do you see the key opportunities for the pharma industry? What do you think are the quick wins when it comes to digital? I, don't know. I mean, I don't know whether there are any quick wins, but I'd say, you know, people are pretty, um, pretty interested in health, right? And as I said to you before, the first thing people do when they get sick or when someone they know gets sick is, is look for information. So I'd say, you know, the first thing you have to get right is search. You know, if you're not visible on, on Google or Bing, then you're not you're not visible on the web. So I'd say get, you know, get search right. That's normally a good, a good indication. Um, secondly, I'd think about communities. I know communities are hard things to do. I wouldn't, I think if I was in pharma, be that concerned about Facebook. Think about maybe communicating with the healthcare professional, which is an easier channel to use, but, but still, you know, still a digital, digital channel. And I'd say, you know, stick with things. You know, I think the, the great secret of success in digital is not changing your strategy every, you know, every couple of months, but, but stay with something, improve it, you know, get behind a certain number of, of initiatives and, and, and work in that way. What do you think will be the biggest game changers when it comes to the digital landscape? I think the biggest game changer is going to be mobile. You know, I think we don't yet realise quite how much it's going to change um, the way we, you know, the way we interact with, with companies. Actually, the current mobile phone is the same power as a PC was 10 years ago. So all of a sudden, we're all walking around with, with laptops in our pocket that can communicate you know, remotely. I've seen a, a study that says if your heart monitor is you know, remotely monitored, the, the death rate decreases by 50%, which is a, a meaningful improvement in performance if, if you have one. So I'd say... Um, you know, all of the ways of connecting, 
you know, the human being, you know, the bracelet that monitors how much activity you do, the scales that monitor your weight, connecting the human to the, you know, pharmaceutical company, to the hospital, to the doctor, all of the data that that collects, you know, or that generates and they can collect, the way they can analyse, you know, how you're doing against a performance. You know, we talk about more targeted versions of medicine, well, this is kind of, a, a, you know, another level of targeting of performance. So I'd say, you know, mobile and data, the relationship between the two is going to be the area where maybe not two years out, but I think, you know, two to five years out, we'll see the most um, innovation and, and new ways of, um, you know, helping people get better, I guess. Mark, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks for your time. Pleasure. Thank you.